Hey there, this is Tbilisi, the capital of the country of Georgia. That is the uh, Georgian flag there. I arrived a few days ago, my second time here back after a year. I was here last November, it is mid-October, a beautiful, sunny and warmish day. I am here only to uh, hang out for a few days, I've been here a few days, and then tomorrow I am traveling to Armenia, which I haven't been to yet. Looking forward to it. The uh, castle up on the hill there, and you can see a uh, gondola thing going up to the uh, top of the hill there. So super stoked for Armenia. So I thought that I would record this video walking through the streets of Tbilisi, which are very, very interesting. You're going to get a real uh, mix of all different parts of the city in the course of this video. I am actually walking to a uh, bookstore to try to find a Armenian guidebook in English. I oftentimes don't have guidebooks for the countries that I go to. I would prefer to but it is often just inconvenient to uh, find one when you're in a foreign country. And so I'm heading for a bookstore called Prospero's, which is a like mile walk away. So it's going to be a uh, really cool territory exploring part of the uh, rundown part of the city. Tbilisi is a real mix of the old and the new the crumbling old buildings, many of them Soviet era or earlier than that. And there are some newer, very futuristic looking buildings as well. So this video is about my strange experience in Mardin, Turkey, which is very close to the border of Syria. And if you saw my other video about the ancient ruins of Haran, just uh, 12 miles from the Syria border, then uh, you may already kind of know the general situation. I was on a two-week road trip around Turkey. And traveled to southern Turkey near the Syria border before there was the threat by Turkish President Erdogan to attack Syria after President Trump had announced withdrawing U.S. troops from the northern Syria area, part of Kurdistan, or there is no actual Kurdistan, but uh, a Kurdish region, the Kurdish people within northern Syria who had been U.S. allies, and President Trump all of a sudden decided to pull out. All right, I am pretty much legitimately lost here, but I'll end up somewhere. And so because of the U.S. pull out of support, then I guess basically Turkey had wanted to get in there anyways, supposedly to combat terrorism there, although the people that he's calling terrorists are people that were supposedly U.S. allies. And I'm not going to uh, try to make a determination on that myself because it's all super confusing, like who's an ally, who's against us, they switch sides, I mean it's all messed up basically. But uh, anyways, so after I had visited the ruins of Haran, ancient desert ruins, where Abraham from the Bible lived, where King Nebuchadnezzar lived and ruled from, attacked by Alexander the Great, and also attacked by the grandson of Genghis Khan, all of this happened in this town, which is now like a little deserted desert uh, 
village with a modern uh, city around it. And so a very, very historical place, one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world. So after I visited that place, then I uh, stayed the night in San Lurfa. A city just north of there. All right. I uh, recognize where I am now. So back on one of the uh, main streets. And so after there, then I wanted to travel to the city of Mardin in Turkey, which was a two hour drive straight east of San Lurfa. People had recommended it. It was also a old city. And I had looked at uh, some images on Google and it looked really, really cool. So I decided to drive over there. So the next day I drive to Mardin. I get there and it is not at all what I had expected. There is some kind of race going on. There are these old, like, uh, race car type cars. So this is quite a uh, traffic jam here. I'm going to go underground, take the uh, underground passage, which is where I bought these new shoes for 55 Georgian Lari or a little less than $20. So far they're working out great. And so you'll see all these uh, underground shops as I uh, walk down into the tunnel up ahead. Get up. And so I arrived in Mardin. Here we go. Underground retail zone. Speaking of books, here's some books, but uh, probably not a English language Armenian guidebook. I think that one is Kachapuri. So I arrive in Mardin and it is nothing like uh, I had expected because it's a big city with all these big buildings, apartment buildings and hotels and stuff. And I had a hotel reserved for two nights. Hello. And so I find the hotel and it is a long ways from the old town. So there is the big city around the old town and the hotel that I have is like four miles or something away in this area that's like a new development area with these big buildings, like apartment block buildings. And then it's just kind of nothingness right where my hotel is. It's like the end of the development area and it's just like these fields. So I bought my shoes right here a wide selection of shoes or maybe it was here yeah i think it was this shop here another wide selection of shoes number six number seven so fortunately the uh, hotel is really nice the uh guy at the reception desk is super friendly the room is awesome. It is like $22 a night for this apartment with a separate bedroom and a kitchen and stuff. So great uh, room. Homemade Georgian wine. 150 Georgian lari, that is 50 cents.
So uh, there is a soccer game, also known as football, of course, and uh, it is between Georgia and Ireland. And so those guys are obviously footballers. The game is in a couple of hours, and I actually ran into some viewers here who uh, recognize me, and they're from the UK, but uh, the guy is uh, Irish, or his family lives in Ireland, something like that. And so they came here for the uh, game, all the way from London, and then also just to see Georgia, and invited me to uh, join them at the game but I just have too much stuff to do, including this uh, mission to try to find the uh, guidebook. And then I also am looking for the uh, new GoPro 8 before I take off to Armenia. And so the game is in like an hour and a half or something like that. I did some shopping here at this uh, mall yesterday as well. I did a whole bunch of clothes shopping, the Galleria Tbilisi, and got uh, socks and a sweater and new pants. Not these ones, these are the old pants, but uh, getting ready for the uh, colder weather that's coming. So I uh, check into the room and then uh, hang out there and work on stuff through the afternoon and the evening. And later, around nine o'clock, then I decide to head out and go check out the old town and try to find a decent restaurant, and just kind of see the old town at night. So I get in the car, I have a rental car, plug in Google Maps and I have no idea if like it's going to be deserted or kind of a sketchy scene or what, but I'm figuring I just go there, take a look, and if it's not good to be there, then I'll just leave. And so I am on my way there and I run into a traffic jam, which was unexpected because it's nine o'clock at night. So there is a one-way street that goes through the old town it is totally clogged up because of like nightlife traffic. People going there to uh, hang out for the evening. And so I end up just totally stuck in this traffic jam inching through the uh, town and it's still not quite what I had expected anyways. It's more modern. I guess I wasn't actually seeing the real old town, but I stick with it. I have no choice. It's a one-way street and you just got to go with it. So I uh, eventually get to a point where there's a street going off and I decide to head off there and try to find a parking space. So I go off of this uh, main street, which itself is very narrow, end up on an even narrower little street go to the end and there's a restaurant and there's a parking area there and a guy like managing the parking so I can park there it's cheap it's like 10 lira which is a dollar fifty but I need to leave my key with them because it's gonna get kind of you know compact and they need to be able to move cars around if necessary so you know I'm a little trepidatious about leaving my keys with him, but he seems totally cool. It's right next to this nice looking restaurant. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. And so I take off walking, walk back to that main street, and there's lots of restaurants and clubs and stuff. I'm looking for a glass of wine. I'm not super hungry quite yet, but just want to uh, take a seat and sip on a glass of wine and kind of soak up a little bit of the uh, evening nightlife action but it is turkey and it is eastern turkey and alcohol is hard to find it's not available in most of the restaurants i ask around people are kind of pointing in different directions i get one suggestion to go up this 
one uh, lane. And so I go up that lane and there are two police officers. They're questioning a group of three or four Turkish younger guys and girls. And they stop me. The guy speaks good English, fortunately. But he asked me, what are you doing here? And can I see your passport? I didn't have my passport. I didn't bring it because I didn't want to be walking around at night in an unfamiliar area with my passport. I wanted to keep it super simple. And so I had just brought my driver's license, of course, because I was driving, and my little uh, pouch with just a little bit of money in it. And so he asked me for ID and I say, well, I can, I can give you my driver's license. And he looks at that. Now, I'd forgotten that just a couple of days before I'd taken pictures of my passport and my Turkish visa. Hello. Not right now. Thanks. With my phone, and I had my phone with me as well. So I actually had a picture of my passport and visa. I forgot about it at the time because I'd done that recently. Just wasn't thinking about it being there. And so he's kind of looking at the license and then he says, Bulgaria? And I'm like, no, 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 United States, Oregon. I don't know why he thought Bulgaria. So uh, Russian language. Looks like all Russian books. Oh, and some English ones. Harry Potter. So he then makes a phone call and calls like the police head guy, it seemed like. And he tells me, talk to this guy. And so I get on the phone and the guy says to me, why are you in Turkey? What are you doing here? And I just say, oh, I'm a traveler and I went to Cappadocia and Gobekli Tepe and Haran and then I'm here just traveling through. It was fortunately a quick conversation. He was just like, okay, that's fine. And he uh, had me hand it back to the other guy and then it was all good and I kept on walking and got up to this restaurant where they served wine. I got a glass of wine hung out there for a bit and then left and decided to grab some food to go. So I stopped at a little shawarma place, got a uh, like pita sandwich thing to eat back in my hotel room and drive back to my room and then go to sleep and wake up in the morning and there is a message from somebody who follows my travels saying you got to get out of there turkey is about to attack syria and you're right in the danger zone there's a link to an article and so i read the article mentioned in the article is the city of san lurfa which is where i just been the previous day not as somewhere that was going to be attacked but uh that was near the border and within the general area across the border that uh, Erdogan was uh, threatening to attack because of the pullout of US troops and I guess this was basically something that they had wanted to do for some time and Trump pulling us out was the green light for them to go ahead and do it and get in there and try to create a border buffer zone of 20 miles back from the Syria-Turkey border. Apparently that, that's the mission. But it wasn't clear at all what this attack was actually going to be. It hadn't happened yet. It was just a threat by Erdogan of we're going to get in there and attack Syria. This city of Mardin where I am is really close to the Syria border. Now I had been traveling in Turkey for about 10 days at that point and was thinking about wrapping up my trip soon anyways. 
And look what I found. Armenia, the essential guide to customs and culture, and Lonely Planet, Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. So uh, I am all set. All right, going to uh, keep on walking and tell the rest of the story. So one little thing that I forgot to mention was that when I went back to the parking lot to get my car after drinking the uh, glass of wine, then I get there and ask to get my car. They had moved it, but uh, it's still there at least. But then it turns out they take the keys and they put all the keys in this one basket. So the guy comes up to me and he's holding this, uh, this round basket with like dozens of keys in it and they all look the same. They're all the, you know, button keys and they're all black and very similar. And so it takes forever to find the keys to my rental car, partly because it was a rental car and so I wasn't as familiar. Other people, I guess, would go up there and be like, oh yeah, that's mine right there. But uh, I wasn't that familiar with it. So finally we do find it and uh, I get out of there. So the next morning I wake up and realize that there is a war being threatened between Turkey and Syria. And I have to make up my mind what I'm gonna do about it. Am I gonna stay, am I gonna go? I had been thinking of leaving relatively soon anyways. I've been traveling around Turkey for 10 days, seen a lot of amazing stuff. And then it was just totally a big unknown of what does this mean that Turkey is about to attack Syria. And I'm right near the border. So I could have just driven north, driven west, whatever, just gotten out of that general area. But at the time it was just like, you know what, let's just call it good. It's been a great trip and uh, let's go for the uh, safe choice. And, and uh, I was kind of ready to uh, move on to the next country anyways. So I'm there at the hotel and I look online and I book a flight right away, find a good deal to Tbilisi here for two days later. But I have two nights reserved at the uh, hotel where I'm staying. Hey, you here for the, uh, the football? I'm ready. Yeah. Just because he seems drunk already. So. He's ready, he said. I don't, I guess that wasn't a yes or a no, but. And so I have another night at the hotel, but where I am is a eight hour drive back to Kayseri near Cappadocia, which is where I'd flown into initially and rented the car from. And so I booked a flight out of that same airport. And so I have a long eight hour straight driving to get back there. And if I stay at the hotel for that night, then I will have to do that whole drive the next day. And I didn't want to be committed to doing it the day before I'm flying out. I would rather either do it a half and half thing or get it over with today. And so I decided to uh, skip seeing Mardin during the daytime, which had been my plan. Then I was going to uh, take that other day to explore around Mardin, find the, the real uh, old town. Wow, this is a cool little market happening. And so I was going to find the old town and the, and the historic sites that it's, you know, known for and film there and then leave the next day. 
but I decided to skip it. I could have like gone there and tried to squeeze it in and then leave, but that was gonna leave me putting off the uh, driving till later in the afternoon. And so I just decided, oh well, I'm just gonna get out of here. Make my day tomorrow a lot better to already be there or at least be part way. Back to Kayserie, Kayserie. And so I packed up and checked out. The room was only 22 bucks anyway, so you know, no big loss. Started driving. And I was thinking of just going halfway because there's some interesting places to see along the way. But I ended up just, just doing it. And it took nine hours and I made one stop, a uh, gas, fill up the tank and bathroom stop. That was it, one stop. Otherwise, nine hours of driving, much of it in the evening. Arrived around 9.30 or something p.m. and I had a uh, room booked there in Kayseri for two nights. Got there and it was a relief to just be there and know that I was in time for the flight and everything. And then I had the extra day and went out to Cappadocia again. Explored the Love Valley, which I showed in a other video. So I will uh, put the uh, link to the Love Valley video at the end here and so that was my strange experience in Mardin missed out on the uh, site there and everything but uh, it was still an experience to uh, see that part of the, the country and um, just get a little more of a taste of the eastern Turkey it is uh, definitely very very different from Western Turkey the feeling there the uh, the landscapes the drive from Mardin there to Kayseri was so amazing. It was a uh, more uh, kind of remote drive through some very desolate looking spots, little towns, some, some bigger cities. Basically I went from like the desertous areas of Eastern Turkey through like places that look like Nebraska or something. I kind of like went through all these different regions that look like different US states. At one point it looked exactly like where I'm from in Northern California. These like rolling hills of dried up grass. And then it looked like Oregon at one point and the Midwest and like the Southwest. So a really uh, cool drive. So anyway, there you go. Um, this is uh, probably my only video here in Tbilisi. The plan is to get a ride to the Armenian border tomorrow and rent a car and go on a road trip around Armenia. I don't have it all like set up yet. So that's part of what I need to do today. All right, see ya. to add on the end of this a uh, explanation of what happened. Sorry about all the uh, background noise here. I flew out of Kayseri, Turkey on October 8th and saw on the news the next day, October 9th, then Turkish forces had attacked four Syrian cities in northern Syria along the Syria-Turkey border part of the Kurdish region of Syria. Kurds are a minority group in uh, several different Middle Eastern countries, including Syria and Turkey and Iraq, I think Iran. So the belief on the part of the uh, Turkish government in Erdogan is that they pose a threat to Turkey and are causing trouble on the Turkish border. I'm not gonna, you know, get into the politics of it. 
But according to Erdogan, and this is some sort of a effort to make Turkey more secure and uh, stop a supposed threat on their border. Unfortunately, the reality is that civilians have already died, like maybe more than a hundred, who knows? I'm sure that it's just chaos down there. I've read some different articles about it and people are fleeing and trying to get out of the way, but they don't really know where they should go because this is just totally out of the blue and they don't know what's happening or where it's being targeted. So civilians are being massively threatened and their lives turned upside down by this. And it is just the beginning. So uh, who knows where it's going, but uh, hopefully it is a quick resolution and, and uh, Turkey backs off and, and this situation is resolved without further mayhem on the part of the uh, people in that region, but it certainly doesn't look good. Especially now that the United States isn't supporting the Kurds, then they're kind of out on their own and uh, who knows where it goes from here. All right, I am walking to a uh, shop over here that might have cameras and hopefully GoPros. It's always a bit of a uh, issue getting across the street. No crosswalk over there. There's one right here, but can't tell if there's one right over there, so. Here we go. Crossing the street in Tbilisi. They don't really stop for you. Unless you get in the way. There we go. All right, next videos coming from Armenia. Looking forward to it.